I love breakfast. Our stem cells. When we were kids, our grade school teachers taught us that salamanders and starfish can regenerate, but people can't. Right. So that chapter is now being torn out of the playbook and thrown away. The new chapter says, "Yeah, humans can regenerate. We do regenerate from the inside out slowly, but there are foods that can speed that up and enhance it." Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess Channel. That was Dr. William Lee, a revolutionary leader who believes food can be your ultimate stem cell power source. Dr. Lee champions plant-based ingredients that can actually boost your body's natural regeneration. That's right. We're talking about foods that can help your body function at its peak. Think of Dr. Lee as a breakfast alchemist, transforming your morning meals into elixirs for cellular health. As president of the Angiogenesis Foundation, he spent years studying how food impacts the intricate network of blood vessels throughout our bodies. This research led him to identify specific ingredients that can support stem cell function. In today's video, we will explore three delicious Dr. Lee-inspired breakfasts packed with stem cell boosting power and lots of protein. Full of protein. We'll show you how to create these healthy, protein-packed and flavorful meals that can give you the energy you need to conquer your day, all while supporting your body's natural regeneration process. Listen now as Dr. Lee describes some of the ingredients in the first protein-packed, stem cell rejuvenating breakfast. He's so smart. I got two bonuses gotcha. for you today. All right, so when it comes to blood pressure, and this is not exactly pantry food, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. So mm. spinach and beets. Yes. First, the dose. One cup of cooked spinach or one cup of beet juice. All right, now here's the background. Spinach, Can you just have a beet? You could also have a beet too. Spinach and beets grow close to the ground. Yeah. They absorb a lot of nitrogen from the soil, very natural. Mm -hmm. When we eat spinach and beets and we chew them, this is why you want to cook it really right. tasty, right? Um, the, your bacteria, the tongue bacteria, tongue microbiome, healthy bacteria in your tongue, interacts with the nitrogen in the food changes it into a form that when we swallow it uh, is absorbed in the stomach as nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It makes our blood vessels widen, lowers our blood pressure. So studies wow. have shown that one cup of cooked spinach will lower your blood pressure by three points over the course of a week and beets and beet juice will do the same. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Next ingredient. Here is the first breakfast. Omega-3 scramble. Ingredients. Scrambled eggs with a splash of olive oil. Chopped spinach and kale. Chopped shiatake mushrooms optional. Number two, there's another fat that you should know about that's found associated with protein. That's in seafood and that's omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s also help our stem cells regenerate. They prompt our body to stay renewed, which is important for aging. Where do you get omega-3s? Well, besides salmon and anchovies and mackerel and sardines, you hear about that a lot. It turns out many, many, many different kinds of seafoods and even seaweeds, actually edible seaweeds, actually have omega-3. So one of the things that I write about in my new book, Eat to Beat Your Diet, is leaning into that seafood section of the grocery store, which you know, some people already like seafood, but some people aren't familiar. And I want to take people's apprehension away to say, dive in there because there's a lot of great stuff. That's a secret to longevity as well. It turns out in many of the blue zones and in many places where people live to a ripe old age, they eat reasonable amounts of seafood regularly. A side of steamed sourdough toast. Omega-3 rich seafood like salmon or sardines optional. It's breakfast, it's breakfast time. Why? It's stem cell savvy. Eggs provide protein, while leafy greens and mushrooms offer antioxidants and phytonutrients. Omega-3s from seafood can further support cellular health. Now Dr. Lee will talk about several ingredients in the second stem cell boosting breakfast. This turns out to be Swiss chard, rainbow chard. Look at that beautiful color of the stems. Um, I really think this is a, quite an amazing, I think like blood vessels, which is what I study, um, but they're really, really beautiful. And it turns out that Swiss chard uh, is a, a member of the beet family. Beet family like uh, spinach also is a same member of the family. So what's actually in uh, Swiss chard 
and beets and spinach that's actually good for your health. It turns out that these plants that glow, grow very low to the ground, okay, they pick up a lot of nitrogen from the soil. Now, nitrogen from the soil uh, actually gets converted in the body, in the gut, into nitric oxide. So here's how it works. Whether you're eating a beet, whether you're eating spinach, or whether you're having Swiss chard, this beautiful stuff. Look at that color. What happens when you chew it really well, okay, so that's why it has to be tasty, the um, tongue microbiome, healthy bacteria that's on your tongue, actually will convert the nitrogen in the plant from the soil into a form that when you swallow the food, in this case Swiss chard, will actually turn into uh, nitric oxide it's absorbed into your bloodstream. What's nitric oxide? Nitric oxide is actually a type of gas, but it doesn't bubble or anything like that. It's in our bloodstream. It causes our blood vessels to dilate, lowers blood pressure, okay, which is a calming thing, but also helps to recruit stem cells, uh, one of our body's health defense systems, to really help us heal and repair from inside out. So I'm going to just pick one of these leaves just to show you um, just how beautiful this can be. I'm going to take a small one. Here, look at this. This baby here has got full of nitrogen from the soil and actually can help recruit stem cells. Next ingredient. And it turns out that black tea actually is quite active. I studied uh, Chinese green tea, Japanese green tea, and, and studied um, Pearl Grey. And we can, and so you can, besides comparing foods with drugs, you can compare foods with foods to find out which is the best kind. I was interested in is Japanese sencha or Chinese green tea and jasmine tea or is um, Earl Grey? Which one is better when you throw them into the system? And we found actually surprisingly that Earl Grey, the black tea flavored bergamot, actually was the most potent tea when you combined all, when you looked at all three side by side. Now the second stem cell breakfast. Breakfast. Fiddlehead frittata. Ingredients. Sauteed fiddleheads cleaned and trimmed. Chop Swiss chard or collard greens. One to two scrambled eggs. Crumbled feta cheese optional. A side of sourdough toast. Black tea on the side. Why? It's stem cell savvy. Fiddleheads are a unique source of antioxidants and fiber. Leafy greens add additional nutrients, while eggs provide protein. Black tea offers a gentle caffeine boost. Breakfast! Now, let's listen to Dr. Lee discuss a few of the ingredients in the last breakfast. Hey, Dr. Will Lee here. I am at the market once again, and I want to show you a couple of things that I found that I think is worthy of showing you, sharing with you. Okay, so I don't go around trashing other people's products, but I want to show you amazing things that I'm actually looking at. Check this out. Kale, right? Kale is a brassica. It contains uh, healthy bioactives uh, like isothiocyanates, hard to pronounce, ITCs. They uh, create sulforaphanes and the things that make broccoli take, taste kind of sulfury. Uh, but it's really good for you. It's good for your immune system, good for cancer fighting, good for your circulation, good for your gut microbiome. Most of these uh, uh, kale has a good sort of dietary fiber. You always think about kale as one thing, right? Like this. Always think about kale looking like this. That's your mother's kale. Let me show you some really cool kale. This is a kind of kale called laxinato, also called dinosaur kale. Doesn't this look like dinosaur skin? Check it out. Jurassic kale, that's what this is, all right? Lacinato, it's also called cavalanero. A lot of people don't know, but this kind of kale, dinosaur kale, is what's used to create minestrone soup. You know those little black um, uh, little squares in the soup floating around? That is dinosaur kale, uh, laxinato kale, Tuscan kale is in the kale. Now, I want to show you something that is more unusual, because I haven't seen this before. Spigarello kale. Look at this. Spigarello kale. Wow, very different, huh? Look at that, it looks like a arugula almost. Um, but this is a kind of kale, and it just shows you how many different types of healthy foods there are. Look at this right here, All right? It looks like, like growing to the sea or something. Healthy, good, good for you. If you don't know how to actually cook something, um, I have no idea how to cook spigarello kale. 
what I recommend you do is to type it into Google, Spigarello kale, for example, uh, Tuscan kale, dinosaur kale, recipe, and hit video, and watch somebody who knows what they're doing show you how to make something absolutely delicious. So if you want to learn more about food as medicine and really cool foods that you might not have thought about to light up your health defenses, light up your metabolism, light up your life, get to better longevity, uh, come over and uh, follow me, sign up for uh, my uh, stuff on my website uh, or uh, at www.drdrwilliamlee.com. And um, by the way, I do teach a course, online course called Eat to Beat Disease Course. This is a deep dive with me. I take you with me on this journey of how to use food as medicine, foods that taste great. All right, Dr. Lee out. Next ingredient. Okay, all right. So then we got Parmesan cheese. Again, there was this whole backlash cheese for a while. Everyone told you not to eat cheese, then it's eat hard cheese. Uh, now you're saying that cheese has this benefit, the same as sourdough bread. Yeah, well, listen, this is a, this is a way that science can help clear up confusion. Here's okay. what we know. Cheese and breads are sometimes probiotic foods, which means that they're made with good bacteria. We know that you want good, healthy gut bacteria mm -hmm. for your health. And there's a new thing that says that our gut health is connected to our hair health. You've got beautiful hair. And so here's the whole thing. There's one bacteria called Lactobacillus ruteri, which happens to naturally occur in Parmesan cheese, and it's in the starter for sourdough bread and pumpernickel bread. And naturally. Lactobacillus? Lactobacillus ruteri. 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 That's all you And remember. that's in cheese and in the starter of sourdough bread. Sourdough bread. bread. That's not something we would see on the label. You might not. So you're informing us that it's um, there. And what does it do for us again? It actually makes your hair luxurious. In what quantity? Well, so... Because <laughs> I'm about to eat this whole thing. <laughs> this is true. Here's the whole thing. It is just one additional way that we actually know that eating uh, this bacteria is good for you. It has a probiotic, but this is now giving you permission to actually lean into the foods that you actually already love to be able to have some of it because it's not so bad for you. It actually might be good for you and good for your hair. Okay, so like a few ounces? Yeah, a few ounces. A couple of slices. A week. Uh, uh, actually, you... So studies have actually shown a couple of slices of cheese a day is actually can be actually good for your health as well. Okay, and how does it make us feel? What about the feeling yeah. that we so get in our body? So here's the great part. Lactobacillus ruteri is not only good for our hair, it also stimulates our brains to release a social hormone called oxytocin, mm -hmm. which is the hormone that makes you feel good when you see a friend, when you hug a family member that you like, or when you have a kiss or even an orgasm. This is my cheese. <laughs> I'm not sharing it. <laughs> Okay. So, doctor, before you go, just to clarify, you are saying that this cheese, this bread, the lactobacillus ruteri, ruteri, yeah, sets off hormones. Yes, it actually natural brain hormones that actually are social hormones. So they actually make us feel good. They can reduce stress. Uh, they they punch up our mood. And basically, when you actually feel good on the inside and you look good on the outside, you feel less stress anyway. And now for the last stem cell protein breakfast. Three, savory breakfast egg custard. Ingredients, chopped collard greens, kale, and green beans sauteed in olive oil, mixed with scrambled eggs and poured into a baking dish, topped with grated Parmesan cheese optional and baked until set side of sliced tomatoes and a cup of coffee in moderation. Why? It's a stem cell slammer. Leafy greens and vegetables offer a variety of nutrients, while eggs provide protein. Coffee, in moderation, may offer some health benefits. Breakfast be lovely. Please give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe for more valuable content on health and wellness. Your support enables us to continue delivering essential information to assist you in leading a healthier life. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you excellent health, wealth and happiness, with the key to vitality in your hands.